Good evening, everyone. It's 6.30, and we're here for a city council meeting. Uh, today is Monday, October 18th, 2021. We'll start this meeting with a roll call and determination of quorum. Nordstrom. Here. Weifenbach. Roberts. Here. Stroman. Here. Armstrong. Here. Jones. Here. Lehman. Here. Solomon. Here. Evans. Here. Drew. Here. We have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda is the invocation by Pastor James Moore, and following the invocation, the, pl the Pledge of Allegiance. There we go. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, tonight, we ask a very special prayer over our city council and mayor. Lord, that each one of them would feel the presence of God tonight. That, Lord, you would be with them, each one of them, with wisdom and discernment. Let them feel the love of God and the presence of God and a affirmation of God and their leadership. Lord, let tonight not be a burden to them in any way. But, Lord, we know the leadership burden is on them. But, Lord, thank you, everyone. We're going to start out the meeting. The uh, members of the Sustainability Committee and EchoWorks come forward, please. Oh, sorry, we missed that. We'll, I'll do it in a minute. <laughs> okay, we need a motion. These these guys aren't going to go to work until we adopt the agenda. So, uh, <laughs> we have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda. Uh, all in favor of adopting that agenda, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Good evening. My name is Kevin Crosby. I'm the vice chair of the Rapid City Sustainability Committee, which is a volunteer committee of the city government with a mission to encourage education, stewardship, and policy leadership that will make our community a leader in economic, social, and environmental sustainability. One of our programs is recognizing individuals that contribute to this mission with sustainability awards. Today, I'm very pleased to announce that Mayor Allender will be presenting EchoWorks with the 2021 Rapid City Sustainability Award. EchoWorks is an enterprise of Black Hills Works and employs people with disabilities to provide electronic recycling services to Rapid City in the greater Black Hills region. Since its establishment only in, in January 2020, not very long ago, EchoWorks has already collected over 75,000 pounds or over 35 tons of electronics. There are more than 1,000 toxic sub substances associated with e-waste, and it's the fastest growing hazardous solid waste in the world. Up to 70% of heavy metals in landfills, like the Rapid City landfill, come from discarded electronics. The EchoWorks e-waste program reduces the local and global environmental impact of electronic waste from Rapid City. EchoWorks is located at and operated in collaboration with Western Dakota Tech. Their environmental engineering technician students provide research and their trucking students haul the waste. Western Dakota Tech professors have partnered with Black Hills Works to present at academic and professional conferences to educate others about e-waste and the benefits of this cooperative employment program. This collaboration has been a valuable win-win for both organizations, their employees, students, the community, and the environment. EchoWorks employs two empl people with disabilities, Blaze and Joey, who work along with their supervisor, have disassembled and sorted more than four tons of electronics to prepare their ways for proper recycling. For all these reasons, I'm happy to be able to present Black Hills Works and Western Dakota Tech with the Sustainability Award for EchoWorks. Uh, just to introduce a few of the many people we have up here with us this evening. Um, we have Dr. Ann Volman, president of Western Dakota Tech, uh, Dr. Kelsey Murray, and Sandra Culvert from Western Dakota Tech. And from Black Hills Works, we have Arnina Serna, president of the Black Hills Works Foundation, Tammy Hopp, director of philanthropy, and accepting the awards for Echo Works will be Tara Blasis, Black Hills Works vice president of educational services, Randy Shepard, Echo Works e-recycling supervisor, and Blaze.
Well, I think it's fitting to be proud of uh, this community, to be proud of this sustainability committee, as well as EchoWorks. Th this is the type of innovation and different thinking that's needed for us to transition from the old ways to the new ways. And uh, so I'm glad that uh, all these folks are up here and engaged in this and committed to uh, Rapid City and a better future. So thank you, everyone. Anyone want to say? Anyone want to say anything? Speech? <laughs> so let's move this and we're just going to get a photo together, okay? Okay, next on the agenda, item number two is a present, uh, presentation from the CAVE Collective. And so when you uh, get to the microphone, please introduce yourself and... Uh... Thank you. Um, my name is Mary Hahn. I serve as the president of the board of the CAVE Collective. Um, as you can see up here, we've got a little bit of our contact information available. The CAVE Collective is a youth-driven, registered 501c3 nonprofit community organization committed to providing a safe, sober, and inclusive space for all ages and promoting mental health through music, art, and educational mentorships. And our purpose in being here this evening is just to kind of familiarize the board with some of the, or the city council, I apologize, with some of the work that we're doing. Um, I've been honored to know some of you already in the work that we're doing. And I just wanted to give an opportunity for the rest of you to hear about the mission of the CAVE Collective and understand more about what it is that we're doing here. You'll see some names up there on the board. I just wanted to provide some recognition. Uh, as a youth-driven organization, we are led and guided by a youth leadership committee. Um, the members of the board are listed there only by their first names as they um, preferred. And then our executive board is listed below. Um, so. We are at 406 Fifth Street, which is the Abbey's Feed and Seed historic building directly across the street from here. So if you ever want to stop in, you would be more than welcome. The Cave Collective is a space for everyone. It started over a decade ago as our founder hosted sober shows and live music in an actual cave in her property in the Black Hills. In 2019, we opened our first location on 7th Street, and it quickly became a sought after venue and gallery for local and touring musicians. Black Hills poets, regional artists, and other um, community engagements. Um, when COVID hit, we shuttered that venue and we took our content online through a series of live streamed concerts, our story and song series, and our collective conversations, which is a weekly series um, of discussions that we live stream. And they are centered around the intersections of mental health, community, and the arts. And we've actually been honored to have a couple members of the city council as guests on our collective conversation series. Um, when COVID hit and we shuttered our venue, um, as I said, we did take all of our content online. And then we were um, able to reopen this past May at 406 Fifth Street. And over the course of the summer, we served thousands of Rapid City community mem members, traveling artists, and tourists who came through the area. We offer low to no cost programming for participants through volunteer opportunities and by identifying sponsors to cover costs of events. We strive to always find a way 
through or around a financial barrier preventing engagement. And this enables us to work with um, young people of all ages, no matter their background or their financial ability to pay for a particular course or an event. The CAVE has developed community connections across a diverse representation of our geographic area, including our young adult community, our community of elders, and members of our nearby tribal nations. This is just a photo from when we reopened um, at the beginning of May. We had just a giant concert out in the parking lot um, featuring bands of all genres, so it was really fun to be back in that compound. And if you haven't been back into the Abbey's Feed and Seed compound, I really encourage it. There's a restaurant opening back there, a brewery as well, a lot of really interesting businesses opening up, and it's going to be quite a hopping spot. The Cave Collective fosters mutual support, growth, accountability, and compassion, which are all components necessary for mental health recovery and destigmatizing access to support. Rapid City needs to focus on mental health, which is substantiated by the United Way Needs Assessment from 2019 and 2020, which listed mental health as the primary area of need for the Black Hills. The Youth Risk Behavior Assessment Survey, which um, was completed in 2019, showed an increase in suicidal thoughts of South Dakota students since 2013, with students reporting less help when experiencing difficulty and hopelessness. Less than 30% of students asked for help before attempting suicide, and suicide is the second leading cause of death in ages 15 through 34, according to SD Suicide Prevention. This demonstrates the need for safe spaces in our community for individuals who are experiencing emotional turmoil so that they can seek support. And for many in our community, the Cave Collective is that safe space. A lot of what we do um, is centered around educational mentorships, which is listed in our mission statement. And part of what that looks like is offering the free tutoring that we have. Um, we have courses in filmmaking, sound production, graphic design, marketing. Many of these courses are offered um, to all ages. And people can kind of pay what they can, which is really awesome. When they come in and they want to pay 100 bucks for a six-week course, they can do that. If they come in and they just want to sweep up after the class, they can do that. And so it allows people to um, benefit from the educational opportunities without having to provide financial backing as well. So along with those courses, we have nightly events at the Cave Collective. We have craft nights. We have open mic nights, board game nights. We have live music every Friday and Saturday night in our venue space, um, and we're able to host local and touring acts there. It's been shown that communities that are able to retain their youth are the communities that have vibrant arts and culture atmospheres, plenty of options for young people to engage with the community, and interesting employment opportunities. Rapid City's comprehensive plan outlines much of this, and the Cave Collective fills many of those needs. Youth-driven spaces like the Cave Collective allow young people to explore their passions and their interests in empowering ways. We believe in empowering the young people of Rapid City. And so through our youth leadership initiatives, our youth employment, and the youth-driven ideas that come to life at the Cave Collective, we're able to lower rates of substance abuse and suicidality in young people. According to youth.gov and the CDC, those sorts of programs are the things that reduce rates of substance abuse and suicidality. It also increases the retention rates of youth after high school. And if we want to keep these bright young minds here working in our city to make it a more beautiful and better community, um, we have to give them incentive to stay, and we have to empower them to do so. In providing a safe space, um, we get to see kids start bands for the first time. We get to see um, students who are struggling in a particular subject, um, meet and uh, get to know a tutor who's able to help them through when they have school struggles. We partner with South Dakota School of Mines quite closely and have members of their professional faculty who come in and tutor students for free, um, which is a really great opportunity, especially for kids that would not be able to afford tutoring or wouldn't seek it out because of the cost associated with it. They're able to just walk into the cave any day of the week between 3.30 and 6 o'clock and find a tutor that's able to connect with them and work with them wherever they're struggling. So again, our purpose this evening in being here tonight, um, I had about six young people that were going to join me, and then we put on a pumpkin carving event at the Cave Collective. So now there's about 20 kids over there making messes instead of being here with the boring adults. But that's all right. 
So I just wanted to bring it to all of your attention, what it is that we're doing, because a lot of people drive by and they go, hmm, Cave Collective, what's that? And they're not really sure. And so we wanted to, to add a little bit of education to the community around our mission and what it is that we're doing here in Rapid City and ways that you can get involved. So what we need from you, you can check out our calendar at www.thecavecollective.org. You can attend events at The Cave Collective. If I see one of you there, I will buy you a ticket. Um, you can spread the word. Word of mouth means a lot in a smaller community like Rapid City. And so if you talk about the cave and our mission to impact young folks, we can reach a lot more people. And I know some of you already actually through your children, which is really cool to me um, to see your faces up there and then to know that I've, I've met your, your children or your nieces or nephews um, actually at the Cave Collective. It's a really um, unique space and I'm really grateful to be a part of it and you can also get involved if you want to lead a class or offer a workshop shop or play some music or become a tutor you can reach out to us um, anytime and we would welcome that because it's a safe space where we want to foster intergenerational relationships between young people and the older generation who are able to pass along stories and wisdom and education so thank you all very much thank you Mary for that uh, presentation very nicely done uh, Darla Drew. I just have to chime in on this. Um, I'm a big fan of the Cave Collective, and I keep threatening to come to one of your open mic nights. I think it'd be a culture shock for most of those kids. But, you know, the, um, the idea of providing a place for 14, uh, 18, even 20-year-olds, everybody over under 21, is so important because they don't have any outlets here. Where do they get together? And this is alcohol-free. These guys do all this stuff mostly volunteer and um, have been at it for a long time so I, I'm a big fan I watch your stuff on on streaming uh, some bands are successful for me others not quite so much but I, I just feel like you are providing such an excellent service I went and talked to you guys and I said oh you're gonna need a 501c3 oh we got that oh you're gonna need a, a, a some kind of a health inspection license for your coffee shot did, did that oh you're gonna have to have cameras and stuff for a, a three camera shoot did it have all our, our equipment up I, they were so sharp and so ahead of the curve that I really couldn't offer them much help, but I do offer them my support. And, you know, we help the tech kids. Let's help the other kids. And I'd like to see this supported by the city in some way. Thank you, Mary. Yes, thank you. We, uh, we were really lucky that the Battle of the Bands winner for this year in the state of South Dakota actually was formed at the Cave Collective. The Rowan Grace Band came to one of our open mic nights and didn't have a backups, backup band. She just got some people up there on stage with her and went on to win the Battle of the Bands just after meeting at the cave. So cool stories like that are what really make it worth it. All right, thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, general public comment. I believe we have one from Chuck Henry. It sounds like a great program for mental health issues. On behalf of Black Hills Works, who I'm a am an advocate for, I would like to would like to thank the Sustainability Committee for the award. Echoes is just one part of many programs that the Black Hills Work has among many credit contracts out to Ellsworth and in the community. Again, thank you. <coughs> it helps out the community and the benefits people serve and have disabilities. So again, I thank you for the award and the council's support. All right. That will close our general public comment and on to non-public hearing items. Uh, Richie Nordstrom. <coughs> Sorry to get chimed in this late, Mayor. I don't know if we reached a conclusion, but we were talking about the public comment being directed to the city council members. The, the consensus was that we were going to be putting a link within the agenda so they could contact us so they could make public comments if they would like. Are you up to speed on that conversation? Apparently not. not. So um, the, the short version is that we were, we were lacking the public comment. You're talking about like electronic, electronic comments? Yes, yes. And yes, I am up to speed on that. And uh, last I knew, uh, IT was going to. There is a link. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just not seeing it on the agenda. So I was, that's why I'm asking. 
I, I don't do the agendas because the agendas would come out after that. It's on yep. the actual meetings page. The meetings page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the lesson here is that there is a new link on the meetings page of the city website where people can make a public comment electronically if they wish, and those emails will go to city council members, correct? That'll work. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, non-public hearing items 3 through 41. We'll open public comment on these items 3 through 36. And uh, Chuck Henry would like to speak on item uh, 26, 27, 33, and 35. All the way through. Uh, <coughs> I've talked to the police chief, and we do have a shortage of uh, police officers in Rapid, and we know they need all the helping programs they can to train the current, current, current police officers and um, the recruits that they get every year. And the police um, have been part of the um, Eternal Order of Police for many years. When I knew Craig Teason, he was part of it a lot. So it makes sense for renewing that um, membership. I just talked to the fire chief this, today, tonight about it before the meeting, and what has happened with that ambulance that needs to be remounted is that there are people out there that don't obey the law, law that says when a emergency vehicle has their lights and siren going, they're supposed to pull off to the side and stop. A lot of them don't do that. I've seen it. When I was living in near East North and uh, La Crosse, it took an ambulance that, who that was going hot with lights and siren two minutes to get through that intersection because people are not obeying the, obeying the law. And that's what happens. They end up running the vehicle, we end up, end up running into a vehicle or the vehicle running into them, which damages the ambulance or any emergency vehicles that are running hot and that takes that vehicle out of service. Thank you. Thank oh, you. no. I do got 2035. <clears throat> I've seen the bridge, the um, bridge there that's been out, probably out, closed down for a long period of time. That needs, definitely needs to be repaired. And it needs to be soon so it can reopen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That'll uh, end our. Uh, public comment period on these items. So we'll go to consent items 3 through 36. Would the council like to pull any of these items? Greg Stroman. Whoa. Thank you, Mayor. Um, 10 and 11, please. Darla Drew. 16 and 21. Pat Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 26, please. Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 12, please. Okay, any other items? Uh, Ms. Drew, are you pulling 21 to postpone it? Okay, um, Parks wants 21 pulled to postpone it till the next meeting. Okay. Just so you know. All right, okay. Um, Seeing no further uh, indications, then could we have a motion to approve the consent calendar with the exception of 10, 11, 12, 16, 21, and 26? Motion by Evan, second by Solomon. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now on to item 10. Authorize staff to advertise for bids for pavement rehabilitation, locus and ivy. Uh, estimated cost $800,000, uh, Greg Stroman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is for uh, pavement rehabilitation at Locust and Ivy Streets. And I would just like to ask a question of uh, Public Works Director, if I may. Okay, please do. Um, Dale, uh, could you explain to us what uh, this project is and how it came to this point where we are now advertising for bids for it? 
Certainly, as part of our overall pavement uh, preservation strategy, we implement different types of um, solutions for um, our roadways. Um, I've, I've told this uh, council a number of times that uh, one of our goals for pavement is to keep our good pavement good and take our opportunities where we can uh, because it's much cheaper to do that than to wait for everything to fail and then try to rebuild it. Um, this project is part of our rehabilitation um, plan and it's going to be a mill and an overlay. Um, plus we fix drainage issues if some of the curb and cutters broke. So uh, the $800,000 price tag that you see there is uh, uh, much less than if it were a full reconstruction. Um, so as part of our strategy, we, we look ahead three to five years to see which roads we can actually work on, uh, get our biggest bang for our buck, and go in and implement that plan. Thank you, sir. I, I just think that that illustrates, I mean, there's a lot of talk about street repair all the time, and um, it's a big concern for our city, but I think this is an illustration of our public works director and our public works department is um, proceeding with the plan. They are monitoring the condition of the roads and they are making a priority list and they're trying to take care of things as they're able to financially. And I think it's, it's a very worthwhile project and I just think it's a prime example of what our public works department is doing to try to repair our streets. It's an ongoing process. And no, it doesn't go as fast as everybody would like it to, but it's, it's a deliberate process and there is a plan in place and we are working on it. Thank you. Okay, can I get a motion for item 10? Motion to approve Nordstrom, second Drew. Uh, all in favor of approving item 10, say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 11, request authorization to seek proposals for professional services for Sheridan Lake Re Road reconstruction, Corral Drive to Catherine Boulevard, and also Greg Stroman. Again, Mayor, may I address uh, Public Works Director Dale Tech? Please do. So Dale, this is a pretty um, ambitious project, it looks like. Can you explain how we got to this point um, with um, your request for this particular project? Certainly. Um, of course, with the growth that Rapid City has seen really all around town, uh, the growth out in the southwest has been significant over the last decade. Uh, when Sheridan Lake Road was originally constructed, it was constructed as a three-lane arterial road. Uh, it does not meet the requirements uh, these days for the, the type of traffic that we have on it. There's a lot of delay. Uh, the level of service is deteriorated. Uh, this has been identified in part of the um, uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization planning. We did a corridor study in this area to determine exactly uh, what needs to be built there to handle not only the traffic today, uh, but all the traffic that can be expected for the future. Um, so this has been an ongoing uh, project, been in front of you a number of times through the MPO, through the corridor study. Uh, now it's time to actually hire a consultant to do the design work uh, to reconstruct a, uh, about a two-thirds of a mile portion of Sheridan Lake Road uh, to get it into the uh, configuration that we're going to need uh, for the future. Thank you. And I, again, I, I think that this is an example of Public Works is looking to see where the needs are and there's a long-term planning that goes into um, effect here in order to get to the point where we are now and this is all part of the process again it's a very deliberate process it takes time but I think this is a worthwhile project and uh, I'd make a motion to approve okay motion by Solomon to approve second by Stroman um, all in favor of approving item 11 then say aye, aye. opposed motion carries on to item 60, uh, on to item 12, almost missed it. Request authorization to seek proposals for professional services for Robbinsdale Phase 5 design. Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I'll make the motion to uh, uh, authorize to seek proposals for professionals for services for Robbinsdale Phase 5. 
And if I get a second, I'd like to retain the floor. Second by Evans. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, this is an opportunity for uh, uh, Director Tech to do a ditto on this project as well uh, as the other projects that are already mentioned. But uh, Mr. Tech, could you give us a little background on how we arrived at this point? And the, and in my uh, area of influence is that it seems like it takes a long time, but in reality, it really kind of happened by government speak, it's happened really t relatively quick. Mayor, if I may. Yes, please. Uh, I'm not fond of the word ditto, so I'll just say same. Uh, <laughs> actually, no. Uh, this, once again, is a, a project that's been identified as a need for a very long time. Um, we, we call it a CIP um, project, was identified years ago. Uh, primarily down in the talent IV area down there, the the uh, utilities drive a lot of the work. They were old cast iron water mains that were installed, which was the standard at the time. Uh, they've reached the end of their useful life. So we've targeted and uh, accomplished a lot of projects in that Robbinsdale area uh, to keep the, the water flowing. And then uh, also the concrete pavements that were used down there 60 plus years ago have reached the end of their service life too. So it's a, uh, a very, good quality candidate for us to get in and spend our infrastructures on. It's needed. It can't last much longer. So uh, once again, it's been planned for years and years, and this is just part of the execution of the plan. Thank you, Mr. Tech. And I know I've been involved with it since probably 2011, and I know it's been before that. And, uh, and I can say the same same, same, <laughs> as you did uh, about the uh, concrete streets. They are definitely at their end of life. So I know the residents will really appreciate this uh, project coming forward. And I know we'll, this is the first, one of the first steps, and we'll see many more steps after this uh, project gets underway. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, we have a motion for approval on item 12. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 16, authorize Mayor and Finance Director to sign an amendment to the original agreement between the City of Rapid City and Long Branch Civil Engineering for professional engineering services for Robbinsdale Phase 6 in the amount of $20,840. And that is Darla Drew. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to direct, uh, direct a question to Dale Tech as well. Yes, please. Um, hello, Dale. Uh, we talked about this a little bit before. Um, this this meeting because I didn't really understand a lot of the the uh, phase designed here and um, tell me this is just a design for the um, driveways and stuff that were left out or what is what is going on here uh, no that's not entirely correct um, no really <laughs> Long Branch uh, um, engineering was selected a number of years ago to do design on on um, road CIP projects that we'd identified down in that uh, particular area uh, along Parkview and Fairlane. Uh, drainage also was a concern down there. Uh, they did a lot of preliminary design and we've done some road projects. For instance, uh, there was a portion of Fairlane Drive that was recently reconstructed, upsized the storm sewer uh, within Fairlane. I think uh, many of you can remember the a big storm event we had oh, three or four years ago where we uh, we were floating some cars down in that area. So um, this is a continuation of that overall analysis that they did and we've identified four biddable projects. Uh, so this amendment that's in front of you for $20,000 is just to be able to get uh, plans put together for four biddable projects. Well as part of um, our um, review of those Certainly when you get into residential areas and start um, reconstruction, driveways are the most important thing to folks if you're going to be uh, removing or replacing their driveway. So we uh, decided it would be prudent for Long Branch to take an extra look at driveways to make sure that they were going to drain properly, that they were going to be aligned properly. So that's uh, just part of the overall scope. The majority of the funding is to, to make the four biddable packages. Well. Um as I understand um, these drainage prog projects, I would really like us to consider, uh, with the Sustainability Committee being here tonight, 
um, if there's a way to make more um, natural drainage so that we don't have everything running off and into Rapid Creek. I think that's a, that's a, that's a bad um, precedent and we've done it forever and it, it goes on. And now we have so many chemicals on our streets and in our roads and in our driveways that um, I know that's a little bit off base here, but as we go forward, I would really like to see some more creative um, answers to drainage aside that from just throwing it down the creek. Yes, go ahead. If I could respond to that, we, you know, the, the work we did in Robbinsdale Park, we created a, you know, the, the big pond, but we also included um, water quality um, um, facilities within that so that was the very first thing we did um, and obviously in a fully developed area your your um, opportunities to uh, treat stormwater before it, it makes its way to Rapid Creek are limited so obviously that's very important and as, a, as I said that was one of the very first things we did in this area was to to make those drainage and stormwater quality improvements so uh, future construction phases and additional runoff uh, into the future is treated properly so I'm familiar I think you you went three times the size of what was recommended on that drainage pond and, and uh, good good on you for doing that because it really was needed um, just as we look to the future once we cement or put down asphalt or whatever it doesn't come back up ever we miss that chance to have some natural drainage so just as we're we're, we're growing so quickly that I just would like to um, introduce the idea of maybe something a little bit different in some of our upcoming developments. So thank you for the answer, Dale, and, and uh, I appreciate your work. Okay, motion on item 16, please. Motion to approve by Pat Jones, second by Lehman. All in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item 21, authorize Mayor and Finance Director to sign resolution yeah. uh, to enter into a lease agreement with Black Hills Farmer Market. The Parks Director would like this postponed f uh, for two weeks until November 1st, I believe, because it's untimely. Item number 20 uh, is the appropriate item for tonight's meeting, and 21 would be for next meeting, uh, contingent on the pa uh, passing of item 20. Could I ask um, Director Bigler a couple questions, please, uh, just in getting these things ready? Sure, go ahead. Hello, Director Bigler. Um, do we do any um, health inspection on any of the products that go on, out in our, our farmer's market? Are the canned goods expect, in, inspected? We have South Dakota Department of Health there anywhere. Are the eggs inspected? I mean, what do we have for, for, what? for uh, protections for? people and that's what I'd like to see when you come back with the lease agreement that maybe we have some more protection for our citizenry if if I may uh, the uh, farmers market group does work with uh, with the state the health okay. inspectors that they, they they have all of the inspections that uh, uh, they are required to have for any of the products that they uh, have at the farmers market so we personally don't inspect that but that's between the farmers market uh, organization and the state well, I'm glad to hear that. I've been kind of doing some research on that particular thing to make sure that our food supplies are healthy as we go to new markets and new types of, of dispersal. So um, thank you for your answer. So I could use a motion to postpone item 21 to the November 1st meeting, please. Motion by Evans, second by Nordstrom. Uh, all in favor of that motion say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now on to item 26. Um, authorized Rapid City Police Department to apply for and accept, if awarded, the 2021 Northern and Middle States Rural Law Enforcement Assistance Program in the amount of $120,000. We'll go to Pat Jones. Thank you very much, Mayor. If I, if I may ask the police chief a question or two? Please do. Thank you very much. Chief, the, this Northern and Middle States Rural Law Enforcement Assistance Program, that's kind of one of those vague, ambiguous names like citizens above six foot tall who love to see Thursdays rain on Mondays. Um, could you just kind of explain what this, this organization is and why we would be wanting to uh, participate with them for some funding opportunities? Yes, so um, many of our uh, strings of crimes have been solved by camera systems and whether that's 
one of our more recent involvements with arsons, uh, burglaries. We've even had homicide investigations where we've leaned on camera systems for uh, assistance during the investigation. And when we have an area that has, you know, higher crime, at times we have to borrow camera systems from neighboring agencies because we don't necessarily have our, our own. And uh, as we've been working up in neighborhoods that have experienced crime over the summer, uh, we've found a couple different, we found that folks want more police involvement, they want neighborhood watch involvement, and they also want help with uh, camera surveillance systems. So there's no match for the city. Um, this would be funding that would be utilized specifically for this purpose. And right now we're just asking for authorization to apply and accept if we're awarded. So this would be specifically for the use of purchasing camera systems to deter and investigate crimes as, as needed? Correct, we could deploy them in areas experiencing problems. And, and like I said, we've, uh, we've utilized camera systems to solve some major uh, crimes here in our community, and I think it'd be a good tool for us. Thank you very much. I move approval of item 26. Okay, we'll get a motion from Darla Drew and a second from second from Greg Stroman. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second then, Mr. Solomon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. May I direct a question to our police chief? Yes. Chief, ask this question to the committee. I'll ask it again. What kind of strings are attached to these funds we're receiving? You bet. And, uh, you know, for us, this is good because the strings that are attached are things that we would normally do anyway. So quarterly reporting on violent crime, that's something we pay very closely attention to. Uh, we would have to submit a report. Uh, neighborhood crime prevention activities, we just have to document what we're doing in the neighborhoods and why and how the cameras helped us. And engagement with neighborhood watch meetings. And like I said, these are all things we would normally do in an area experiencing issues anyways. So those are our requirements. Okay, thank you. Okay, Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to piggyback off what uh, Chief Hedrick is saying about the cameras being available in the neighborhoods because uh, we've been asking about this question as well. And he, uh, the, uh, the staff of the police department have been doing a lot of research on this very issue and they've got a lot, lot more information. But uh, th I think the, the neighborhoods uh, groups that are uh, interested in this are, are very supportive of this concept. So if we get this out into the community, the, you'll have a lot more people that'll be up uh, hoping that they can get access to this as well. So thank you. <clears throat> okay, we have a motion and a second for approval of item 26. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And that'll take us through our consent calendar. Now on to non-consent items, items 37 through 41. Um, we'll open the public comment on those items and uh, Chuck Henry is here to speak on item 40. I've lost a lot of respect for the council when I read this on Saturday. Um, yes, station one is so crowded they do need to get remodeled. I still think uh, administration needs to be separate from the operation of state, station one. Um, we definitely need a p police precinct in Southwest Rapid because it's growing over there. And with the storage right now, officers in a different area have to respond to it, and which means increased response time. So this can decrease that response time. And the radios are definitely needed. So different agencies that go to the same event, like the Amber Fire that we had, need to be able to talk to each other. Police department, fire department, state, great state areas. I will, also, I need to talk about the streets again. When I, two years ago, I walked this board two streets that really needed when I was running for council that year. It definitely, 
we got bad streets in Rapid City that need to be done. Besides the regular corridors like 5th Street, uh, 8th Street, um, Mount Rushmore Road, you name it. Those streets are, yeah, we need them, but these extra streets need to be done. Because pot, if you hit a pothole on those streets, some of them are big enough where it'll just stop the car. And this is the big one that I've talked about. This is where I, I'm very not, not happy with the council. The Adam Street pro, pro, after Island Street property. That building is so old, it's dangerous. And if a fire ever starts there, even Squad One wouldn't make it there in time before it's fully engulfed. Plus, it's a danger to city personnel that go in that building. And I've got a lot of friends here from the fire department. I don't want to see them get hurt on that fire. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That'll take us through the public comment period. And we'll start uh, with item 37 under ordinances. Uh, second reading, ordinance 6508, an ordinance to update the process for video lottery machine placement by amending chapter 5.64 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Motion to approve Roberts, second by Lehman. We'll go to Pat Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is nothing against people who are in the video lottery business or do this for a living, but I just, I will not be supporting this. I'll be voting no. I don't think we need more video lottery machines in Rapid City. I don't think more video lottery machines helps us become a brighter star of the West. And so for those reasons, I'll be voting no. Thank you. Okay, John Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I am very happy after being on the council for 10 years that we finally rewrote this ordinance and changed it to where we will actually have less video lottery licenses in Rapid City now than we would have had. So I think that's a good step forward. So anyway, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second on this item. We'll need to go to a roll call vote. Jones? No. Lehman? Aye. Solomon? Aye. Evans? Aye. Drew? Aye. Nordstrom? Aye. Roberts? Aye. Stroman? Aye. Armstrong? Aye. Motion passes 8 to 1. Okay, thank you. On to item 38, first reading of Ordinance 6509 regarding supplemental appropriation number 6 for 2021. Motion approved by Drew and a second by Nordstrom. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 39, first reading of ordinance 6512 regarding supplemental appropriation number seven for 2021. And approved by Jones, second by Nordstrom. All in favor of approval say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Oh, Jason Solomon, is that on this item? Okay, never mind. Uh, that item passes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good time for recess right now. <laughs> now we're going to move on to legal and finance committee items. Uh, item number 40, uh, approve $20 million total allocation of surplus undesignated funds uh, as follows, and each item will be voted on separately. So um, we will take item 40A, just to approve $15,035,000 of surplus undesignated funds for the Fire Station 1 renovation. I'll go to Jason Solomon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, first I will make a motion to approve item A. If I can get a second and retain the floor, please. Second. Second by Nordstrom. Go ahead. And. As we go through this, this list of items uh, that we put together, I think it's a good reminder that this is an opportunity for the city to um, really take care of some essential needs. And uh, this was made possible due to some COVID relief funds that we had that was primarily made available due to public safety purposes. And so in keeping with the spirit uh, of the intention of those funds, uh, we, 
we presented these allocations. Um, I th actually think this is a win-win for Rapid City because not only do we get to take care of some essential public service needs that we have, but we also uh, relieve pressure off of our CIP budget, which is what's used to fund infrastructure projects. So this $20 million that we're investing tonight, that's get, which is coming from primarily through COVID relief funds, uh, in the spirit of that at least, uh, actually allows us to relieve pressure off of those CIP funds that helps with infrastructure projects down the road. That 20 million otherwise would have taken it up, now it gets to relieve some of that so that we can fund other uh, infrastructure projects down the road. So it's a win-win. I strongly support uh, these allocations and I look forward to a positive vote tonight. Thank you. Okay, Bill Evans. Um, thank you. I'm going to be voting no against this, not because I don't support the project, because I wholeheartedly support it and what the uh, fire department needs. I'm opposed to the funding mechanism. I believe when you have the ability to uh, bond part of it, to get a loan for part of it and pay it off over the 30 or 40 year lifespan of the building, that's a smart thing to do, just as you would buying a house. Um, the value of a dollar in 25 years is going to be a lot more than it is now, and having that extra seven and a half million to spend on a few other projects would be a wise way to spend the money that we have in the city. So that's the only reason I'm voting against it. Thank you. Richie Nordstrom. Mayor, have you got a motion yet on item A? Yes, it's motion for approval. Thank you. Um, the reason I'm supporting this is because of, of what Chief Gulberson took me on a tour of the facility and showed me all the uh, negative things that are uh, taking place with uh, that are current conditions of the uh, facility that we have right now. And the biggest thing that, that struck me was the proximity from the, ha uh, I'm gonna call it hazardous waste and I can stand to be corrected, but the proximity from the hazardous waste that is being dealt with and then the uh, clean and the bunker gear and, and everything else needs to be uh, utilized by the, the uh, personnel at the fire department. And that's just one. And there's many other things that are on the list that need to be addressed. So uh, I'm fully supportive of this and needs, needs to be done. So, and, and then I also wanna talk to, uh, uh, talk to or uh, thank uh, Director Tech for the uh, comments that he made during our working session as well. So if you want to care to elaborate, but I, I, I think what you told us is what, why I, uh, another reason why I'm very supportive of this project. Thank you, I'll yield. Darla Drew. Thank you, I'm going to be uh, supporting this project too. I, I come at this from a, a different perspective because the facilities right now don't um, have equitable facilities for women, and as women join the ranks of firefighters uh, more and more, uh, we need to have places for them to change, places for them to shower, and places for them to sleep. And right now, we don't have that at this fire station. We have a lot of personnel there that are women, and um, they're all in one room with curtains dividing them, uh, sharing a shower facility that they have to walk through different parts of the building, it, it is just inequitable. So for me, this is for the women, and I'm going to be voting yes. Okay. We have a motion uh, on the floor for approval of item 40A, and we will need to go to a roll call vote. Roberts. No. Stroman. Aye. Jones? Aye. Lehman? Aye. Solomon? Aye. Evans? No. Drew? Aye. Nordstrom? Aye. Armstrong? Aye. Motion passes seven to two. Okay, thank you. Now on to item 40B, which is to approve uh, $1.5 million of surplus undesignated funds for the fire training tower. Motion for approval by Pat Jones, second by Lance Lehman. Richie Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a question, um, a general question. I don't know who gets to answer this, but is there a reason why we have to use the word surplus? I, I just don't think it fits, but uh, 
Is there a reason why we have to use that word? I can answer that. It's a secret finance department rule. <laughs> I've never heard of government having surpluses, so that's the reason why I'm bringing this up. But uh, Run at it? Uh, no. If we could strike that from all of these. Uh, I'd, well, it's it, on the it, agenda it, now. It, we'll it, know better next time. How yeah, about that? I appreciate it. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to the next time, but uh, yeah, it, it was just one of those things that was like a fingers on the chalkboard when you say government has a surplus. It just doesn't, doesn't work. Thank you. Greg Stroman. Thank you, Mayor. May I address uh, Fire Chief Culverson, please? Please do. Chief, um, we just voted um, to, for a much needed upgrade in the facilities, and the next item here is this. Uh, funds for a fire training tower and as I hear the sirens behind me um, they are going out to <laughs> right celebrate right okay. now <laughs> but you explained this to us previously um, as to um, why this is needed and I thought you had a very good explanation but I can't give that explanation myself I wonder if you could um, repeat it please sure Mr. Mayor Chief Culberson yeah, the, the fire training tower was taken down um, in 2017, so about four years ago, um, after uh, Best Gen purchased the Western Dakota Tech property. We have a 99-year lease agreement with them to have that tower on that property. So when they took that down, they needed WDT and the school system, um, through that lease agreement, are required to rebuild that tower. That's our opinion, our attorney's opinion also. Um, and through that, what we're asking for is the million and a half, and basically it's a front for that money. So we can get the tower built. It's already been four years, and we're ready to build it. We've been without a tower, without a training area for four years. So front the money, allow us to get that infrastructure put in, get that training tower and the burn building put back up while we work through the legal process with the school um, system and or WDT. Thank you, Chief. For that explanation, I would uh, support this um, funding. Okay, we have a motion. Okay. All right, we have a motion on the floor for approval then. Uh, all in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Roll call. Okay. Motion. Said roll call. No. Motion passes. <laughs> Item 40C. Uh, approve 1.5 million dollars of surplus or uh, undesignated funds for the police southwest precinct. Approved. Motion approved by Solomon. Second by Jones. Discussion? Okay, seeing no discussion, all in favor of approving item C uh, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, on to 40D, approve $1 million of undesignated funds for public safety radios. Motion by Lehman to approve, second by Solomon. Uh, Seeing no discussion, all in favor of public safety radios for one million say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 40E, approve $765,000 of, of undesignated funds for street projects. Motion uh, to approve by Jones, second by Roberts, and we'll go to Darla Drew. Thank you, I have a question for Director Tech, please. Uh, yes. Um, what, why was this amount of money um, put aside for roads when we're talking mainly about safety here? And, you know, the police and the firemen, I uh, just don't know what exactly this is. I'll be, I'll be frank with you. This was the money that was left over to be designated to streets, basically, after all of these other projects were identified. With that being said, though, um, our street folks are very excited to be able to have this money to improve the quality uh, of a good portion of our streets. We'll, we'll be, they're excited to get out there, look at some streets that we can get some, some good winds on uh, and, and provide a better quality of uh, life for some of our residential customers out there. So you're saying you have no plan for it, it's just gonna be there 
for stuff? Or no, what? we we do yeah. have a plan for it. Okay. It will be part of our pavement rehabilitation project, so we can take some of those pavements that are failed, make them new again, and uh, make our uh, customers uh, happier. Well, I'm glad you're happy about it and they're happy about it, but I think other people might be happy that it would go towards them. I don't want to make a big deal about this, but um, uh, I, get, I will, Lance, thank you. And so um, I guess that we'll just wait for the vision funds for some of those things. But uh, I just think it sticks out like a sore thumb in an area that everything else is really quite um, designated towards um, solid projects. So thank you for your answer. I won't be voting no. I'll vote yes. OK. Thank you. Uh, so we have a motion for approval of item uh, 40E. Uh, all in favor? Everybody ready? OK, all in favor of 40E, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Now 40F, as in Frank, uh, approved $200,000 of undesignated funds for, funds for IT equipment. Motion by Jones for approval and a second by Roberts. Um, All in favor of 40F, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. And that takes us through item 40. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, uh, Mr. Evans would like to pose a question to our finance director for a moment. So I'm curious. We need these projects, like the fire station. What if we didn't have this 20 million? How would we fund them? We w Correct. We would have had to identify a funding source to bond it when it comes due. I rest my case. All right. On to item 41, which contains 28 alcoholic beverage licenses uh, renewals. Um, I would look over to the police chief to see if they've found any issues that need to be discussed on any of these items. And the answer is no. Motion to approve from Roberts and a second by Lehman. Uh, all in favor of approving item 41, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The hearing items uh, 42 through 46, there are no speaker requests for these items, so we will not have a public hearing. We'll go on to public uh, consent public hearing items 42 through 45. Will there be a motion to take all of these? A motion by Evans to uh, approve the consent items and a second by Roberts. All in favor of approving items 42 through 45 say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Non-consent public hearing items, item 46, a request to approve resolution 2021-052 by KTM Design Solutions for 605 Storage LLC for a comprehensive plan amendment the major street plan for property described as being located on Campbell Street. And the recommendation here is that this uh, item be continued to the November 15th City Council meeting. Second. Motion by Robert, second by Lehman to continue. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 47 is the bill list, and we will now listen to Finance Director Pauline Sumption. So 99% of the time are, there are no additions to the bill list and then the night that there is I leave it on my table downstairs. So the addition is for a 2011B wastewater bond payment in the amount of $86,011.11. So the new total is $10,027,650.58. We have a motion to approve with the addition by Solomon, second from Roberts. All in favor of approving the new and updated bill list, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Motion to adjourn by Nordstrom and a couple others, and a second by Roberts. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. We are adjourned, everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs>